Do you agree, first of all, with the law of enforced mask wearing in Scotland being extended? Uh, I don't. Uh, I think there's an inconsistency in the rules. Uh, so before the First Minister's announcement uh, during the week, I was uh, vigorously campaigning about the inconsistency of why I had to wear a face mask when I went to church, but I could go to a pub, or a nightclub, or a football stadium uh, with everyone packed in without a face mask. There was no consistency, and for uh, a government that was saying everything is being led by the signs, uh, they couldn't prove why this was the case. And uh, Nicola Sturgeon says it's for our safety, but yet yeah, when she was in Westminster Abbey uh, this week for the Thanksgiving service for the Duke of Edinburgh, she didn't wear a face mask. So we were in a situation where she was telling people in Scotland that you must wear a face mask, that's the law, but when I'm down in England, I'm not going to bother. So are English churches safer than Scottish ones? It, that that uh, display uh, did seem to suggest that, well, it seemed to suggest that the only interpretation you could make of it was that it was a rule that simply had to be obeyed because it was a rule, not because it had any internal, far less scientific logic. It felt very much like do as you're told and don't you worry yourself about what I'm doing, even if it's different from what I say. Yes, and when these legislation, uh, the face mask legislation comes into force, you do hope it's because it's science-led. Um, but the First Minister made her personal judgment that she didn't need to wear one in Westminster Abbey. So why didn't she give the people of Scotland this freedom to make this decision earlier? And because of what I can describe as a PR disaster, she has had to ease the, the law on face coverings for places of worship. So on Monday next week, it's no longer a legal requirement. But are churches safer than shops? Are they safer than public transport? Uh, I don't think so. So this phased out um, thing, I think it was just to cover her own back. It, it makes no sense, and she should have just eased them all at the same time. James, bear with me while I, I involve the, my guests uh, in, in the studio. Uh, Madeline, is, could, you, could it be said? I'm sure she would say that she's just been cautious. <laughs> well, if she truly <laughs> believed that it was the cautious thing to do, then given the choice, there was no rule against her wearing a mask to Westminster Abbey. Um, then, you know, she could have chosen to do that. The fact that she didn't, I think, you know, actions to speak louder than words. And I've, throughout the pandemic, and in fact, before the pandemic in many ways, um, Nicola Sturgeon gave a very strong impression, I think, of being someone who, who got off on power, who enjoyed imposing rules just for the sake of it, um, and who also, I think, used her position as, as, as head of, of the Scottish um, government uh, to do things just because it meant being different from the way they were doing things in England. So differentiation for the sake of it. Um, many people felt, for example, that devolution might lead to people, you know, more freedom, more choice, etc. But it's also led, I think, to people just pulling levers for the sake of it. And Nicola Sturgeon is the classic example. Linda, you, you, I know that you come at things from a, a with, with a with the, the the mind of a scientist mm. as much as possible. I, I look on at what's happening in, in Scotland. I think it, S Scottish people have been required to wear masks as much, if not more, than any of the other nations of the United Kingdom and yet we have the a higher incidence of cases and hospitalizations now yeah. how is it possible to to look at those facts and say well we should continue to wear masks then when the other countries that have worn masks less and aren't wearing them now at all have the lower cases no, the sign it's a simple sign. Is, is, is there a way you can yeah, make easy. that work for, easy. for Nicola Sturgeon? Easy. Different germs in England. <laughs> they, can't, they can read the signs at the border and they said, we're not going into Scotland. We'll, the, the, the germs will, will stay here and they've got worse germs in Scotland. Failing that explanation, I think Madeline's on the money here. This is guesswork. When I was an MP, the thing that annoyed me most was guesswork when it made a practical difference to people's lives. And I think, uh, as uh, James said, she's been caught out here. There's an even simpler thing here. If she's got the data, why doesn't she share it? It's for her to say in not more than two minutes, why was it OK for her to preach one thing in Scotland mm. to the people that she's meant to be ruling and do something completely different? People hate hypocrisy. James, uh, you're hearing the the, the, the feelings. Um, uh, oh, we've lost we've lost James at the moment. I can't go back to James. 
why, um, why would, a, a, to me, uh, one thing you can say about Nicola Sturgeon is that she's a competent politician, that she's good at playing the game. Is this a misstep in front of 60 million people? Has, has she finally done something that is indefensibly <laughs> stupid? Not the first... Sorry. Oh, no, no, bit you go. I was going to say it's not the first time. I was appalled by um, the, the palaver about um, Alex Salmon. Uh, we don't need to rehearse the whole story again, but I felt that her mentor was hung out to dry by her. And it did look so ugly when you actually look at the whole thing that happened there. Mm. It's not her first mistake. What mystifies me is, why commit this unforced error? She's got quite a lot of support there, but people turn very, very quickly, as Boris Johnson found with Partygate, on relatively small issues. It was only one mask mm. by one person in one English cathedral. But it does turn people against. I don't know, maybe Madeleine's got a different view, but... Well, I, I think, no, I think, I think that's right. I mean, historically, Nicola Sturgeon has indeed been very, very good at playing the game. She's um, very quick on her feet and she's a persuasive communicator. I mean, I could disagree with her on just about everything, but you do. You do. I've spent a lot of time watching politicians speak and she is compelling and charismatic. Um, one of her tricks was always to, whenever a mistake happens you say that that was the fault of the UK government, so mm. Westminster's fault, and anything good that happens in Scotland was our doing, and we take credit for that. And they've actually been very good at devolving blame away from Scotland um, for historic errors, um, even things that are completely under their control, like the, you know, the, NH the Scottish NH NHS and things like that. But in a way, I think the pandemic has maybe slightly changed mm. that, because that was them really taking ownership of their specific policy um, on masks, on everything. And perhaps now, finally, some accountability is, um, is, is coming to uh, be laid at her feet, which has just not been the case for such a long time. In seeking to give uh, the First Minister the benefit of the doubt, I would have said you could, you could say that you're being cautious. You can always say you're being cautious. I mean, you can justify a lot of things by, by being, you know, the precautionary principle. Mm. But she ought to have worn a mask in Westminster. Is that, I mean, to make that to 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 get to give her the credibility that she was being cautious. How can I, I struggle to say how you can say you're being cautious and then throw caution to the wind mm. in front of TV cameras when you're in an English church? O open and shut case. She's completely um, hold her credibility under the waterline on this matter. She won't sink, but she's shipping water on this basis. Uh, and that, the only other thing I'd say is. Well, think what well, think, think what we've learned is that all the doubters about masks have maybe been shown right, because as you said earlier on, Scotland's got a really high rate. Even they've got this mask in position, so that's not it. Something else is going on. And if she was uh, a real statesperson, she'd say, number one, I made a mistake in the cathedral. Number two, we maybe made a mistake I, on science. I sometimes wonder, actually, you know, when I <laughs> when I do speculate, not to mention conspiracy theories that. They, they, they kind of have to take turns keeping the, as I mentioned, embers, glowing embers. Do they just have to keep... Do, they, do, do, do Westminster and the devolved administrations have to keep COVID just simmering? Just keep, you know, and if, if, if you keep masks and then, and then when you drop masks, something else, it, it feels like a concerted attempt mm. just to not let COVID go. Well, I would say it's not, not by all politicians, um, the UK government, for all of its faults, I do feel that they're trying to move beyond it. And some of the legislation has been, uh, has been, has been left to die and has not been renewed. And there's very specific ways in which it's very different. I think in Nicola Sturgeon's case, part of the, way, the reason that she's wanted this to continue is because it gives her an opportunity to differentiate herself mm. to England and to say, we're the careful ones. You guys are being uh, throwing caution to the wind and all of that stuff. But what you cannot do is set a, a very vicious culture war going on the issue of masks. Keep that going for two years and then yeah. break it yourself. Yeah. That's the thing. But in a way, it's kind of pleasing. It's like you know that that quote. Um, was it the the revolution like Saturn you know, devours its own? Um, I feel that she's stirred up a very hostile and frenetic environment in Scotland, and they're not going to take very kindly to this. James, I think you're back with us. In 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 the interest of in the interest of balance, do you think, and you know, and give the devil its due and all the rest, is there a, is there a way in which we can interpret the, uh, the First Minister's latest actions as caution based on science? Is, th is there a scientific application, interpretation out there that would say, yes, continuing to wear masks is for the good of the Scottish people? Uh, no. Um, the cases are higher than the rest of the United Kingdom, as already been said by the panel. But also, 
again, it's the distinction between places of worship, pubs, nightclubs, football stadiums, compared to shops and public transport. Unless the First Minister can prove the evidence that uh, COVID spreads in these areas, then it's just holding on to power for power's sake. And the best option would be to ease all the restrictions at the same time and give us the same liberties that the rest of the United Kingdom has.